So today, of course, we celebrate the beginning of Advent, uh, uh, the church's season where we wait and prepare ourselves for, for Christmas on December 25th. But I don't know if, if you noticed, uh, if you paid attention or not to the readings, uh, did you notice that they didn't actually talk about Advent or Christmas? Did anyone catch up? Did anyone catch that? Raise your hand if you, if you noticed that. If you didn't pay attention, this is your time to pretend. Just raise your hand, because I'll give you the answer. If you raise your hand, you're right. <laughs> Raise your hand if you no 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 yeah there we go all right yeah just yeah, have a good time participating you know uh, so it's true though right it's true there, these readings did not talk about our preparation for the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not talk about uh, Jesus's birthday on December twenty fifth in fact if you notice it talked about all of the readings had something to do with something far less I suppose joyful uh, or, or or pleasant which is the end of the world. <laughs> Right, which is kind of a kind of jarring thing when we're all waiting for Christmas. It's the most, you know, most happiest time of the year, the most joyful time of the year, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we're talking about the end of time, uh, exciting stuff, right? And just the stuff. It's like, yeah, church, we got it, right? However, there's something important why the church does that, and I want to talk to y'all about that very briefly uh, this morning because there, in in the church's wisdom, there is a reason for this, and it's multifold. And I just want to kind of look at it broadly and then break it down and bring it down uh, to kind of our everyday life. And so, if, if you don't mind, so the reason why we do this, why the first week of Advent every year, by the way, it's not just this year, but it's every year, the first Sunday of Advent talks about Jesus' second coming and our need to be prepared for his second coming, more broadly because it's to remind us of why we celebrate Christmas and Advent, because, now I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but Jesus was already born. Okay, so let's just, let's get that, let's just be very clear about this. It's, we're not actually waiting for his birth. We're celebrating his birth. But he was already born. And so the thing is, is we're looking forward by celebrating his birthday every year. We're reminded of what he did for us. But then we're also called to look forward to his second coming. Or some would even say his third coming because he always comes into your life because of his first coming. So we would call that theologically, this is just a little note, the second coming of Christ is truly when he comes into your life. The third coming, we can say, is, is at the end of time. And so we look to that, right? And, and, and more practically speaking, though, is that we do that because it's so easy to get caught up in the present moment that we forget to look ahead, that we forget why it's all about, right? What we're doing. And the, and the church says, hold on, like, we need to, to, to understand to not just get caught up in the season or this time of year, but to remember why we're doing this, and also not just for like Jesus is the reason for the season type stuff, but for our own lives. Because generally speaking, it's easy to get caught up in the present moment in our own life, and that is not always a good thing. And so I wanna just kind of tic tac, little ding, 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 three things uh, that we can learn from the church's call to have us look ahead at Jesus' second or third coming, how you wanna look at it and how we can make that, how we can take that and be a little bit more practical, all right? Uh, and so the first one, this is the most practical advice of them all, actually, is that we should respond to, a situ to situations, to problems, to events in our life, and not react. So we should respond and not react. Because a response necessarily means that we have to look ahead and do some form of calculation. Whereas a reaction is more of an impulsive response, uh, almost a reflexive response, and, and, and living life off of impulses and reflexes is not a good recipe, not a good idea. Now, impulses and, and, and reactions and reflexes and all this, instincts even, those are not bad things. In fact, they're good things because they're part of who you are. But the, the thing is, is that we have to not let our lives be driven by them. And so the first thing we realize is that we have to not get caught up in the present moment, whatever that present moment is, and not react to that moment, but make a calculated response. That's the most practical advice that we get from this. The second thing, uh, and this next two parts, if there are any millennials 
uh, in, the, in, in the crowd here, anyone watching? I doubt a millennial would, let's be honest, I doubt a millennial would be watching a live stream at 7.30 a.m. However, if you exist, don't be offended by the next two things I'm gonna say. I am a millennial. Just wanted to let y'all know, I'm a millennial, so this is equally offensive to me as to all millennials. So, all right, don't go home telling your kids like father was making fun of you, I was, but as it happens, I'm also making fun of myself. So, uh, that, uh, there's this phrase that you hear every now and then in my generation, kind of, kind of, kind of, you know, it's almost like a mantra they live by, right? It's uh, live life without regrets, which is quite possibly the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Because if you live life with, and, and, and to, to, to be clear, the idea is that don't worry about what you do, don't regret anything that you do because it's your life and you have to do it, you have to live it. And that's pretty dumb because, as you all probably know, uh, no offense, but you're all older than I am, and that means you have more life experience. Life experience. Is that you know that if you live life without regrets, all you'll end up having are regrets in your life. Because it's easy to get caught up in the moment. This, this, this mantra is meaning that it's easy. You just, just get caught up in the moment. Live life without regrets. Don't regret anything you do because you've done it. And that's problematic because it's terribly short-sighted. It looks no further than the present moment. That's no way to live. It's no way to live at all. Because again, if you live life without regrets, not worrying what happens, all you'll have is regrets. Now this is the thing though, right? Is that we all do have regrets in our life. That's, I'll, look, I'll be the first one to raise my hand about that. There's, it happens. We make mistakes. We sometimes even sin, right? And the difference between a mistake and a sin is a mistake is unintentional. A sin is intended, right? And so we have both of those in our lives. And that's, we don't want to say that's a good thing, but it's, a, it's just a thing. And so we have to recognize that, yes, we all have regrets. We all have things we'd like to change or take back. But the thing is, is that living this, living this mantra of living life without regrets, it's almost as if it doesn't want you to change your ways because what's the point? You've already done it. But the whole point of what we celebrate in Advent and Christmas is the opportunity to change our lives because Jesus comes into our life to change it precisely for that reason. And so if we're living life without looking back or looking forward, we have no opportunity, no real reason, no desire to change our life. But the whole point of this season and Christmas is because it can be changed. Jesus was born to change the world and our lives. And we have to recognize that and respond to that. Now, it's also interesting, though, because I also believe, on the other hand, that living life without regret is also a very good way to live our lives, but not in the way that my generation intends it, because we should try to live our lives in a way that, in pursuing the highest good and in pursuing holiness, we try not to make those mistakes or commit those sins that we know are not good for us. And so you see kind of this, this short-sighted live life without regrets and this long-sighted live life without regrets, the long-sighted one where we respond to the invitation of God in our lives. Ah, those are the kind of regrets we want to avoid. But the first one, mm. so we're called to look ahead so that in pursuing Christ, we can look back and truly have no regrets on the life we live in Christ. Uh, the second thing that my generation uh, says a lot and uh, is uh, you only live once. And this is kind of very much connected to the, you know, live life without regrets, but you know, the YOLO lifestyle, right? You've all, I know I've heard it a lot. You probably have. And again, it is dumb. It's dumb because again, the implied, the, the implicit thing there is that you only live once, so make the most out of it. Just go for it. You got one life to live, make it count, have fun, da 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 da, whatever. Which is also very stupid. It's also right, to be honest with you. They're right. You only do have one life, so don't mess it up. <laughs> you 
You've got one life to live. You're right. You only live once. You don't get a second chance. <laughs> so you've got to make this one count. If you only look at this life, if you only look at this life as something where you need to just go for it, well, what about when our life changes in eternity? Because we do only live once. But the way we live now, in our lives now, has eternal effect. And if we only care about this present life to get the most out of it, derive the most pleasure, have the most fun, whatever, which are not bad things in themselves, by the way, but if that's all we're pursuing, and to be honest, all that the secular world offers us is precisely just that. It's pleasure hit to pleasure hit to fun to pleasure hit, and it's just a constant dopamine and serotonin cycle in your head. If that's all we're, we're living for, yeah, we only live once, and <laughs> all right, it's not quite a life. Whereas, if we realize, yes, we only live once, but this life has an eternal effect, has an eternal component to it, if we realize, or again, remembering why he came, we will make the most of our lives in the truest and most long-sighted sense. That we'll know, yeah, this is our only life, and so we, we got to make the most of it, truly. Make the most of it. Truly have the Lord make the most impact in our lives and with Christ at our side and in our hearts. Make the most impact in the world around us. And so again, you see the short-sightedness. You only live once, so go for it. Have the most pleasure, have the most fun. Make the most mistakes, don't worry, because it's all you got. You got nothing else, so why not? And then the Christian perspective, which says, yeah, you do only live once. And we want you to live in eternity too, with Jesus, fulfilled by him and in him. And sometimes life is hard, but if you really follow him and pursue him, that one life will stretch out into all eternity with him and with each other. And so my brothers and sisters, these are just some practical insights of what we can glean from our first set of readings this week on the first Sunday of Advent. That we are called to not just look at the present moment, whether it's today or this month or this year, but we're called to live our lives with farsightedness, looking to the ultimate return of Christ, but also knowing what that return means and to also understand why his coming at Christmas, how it should affect our lives, that we should be unstuck from this immediate foresight, or this immediate foresight and look forward to his second or third coming and how that affects our lives. My brothers and sisters, respond to the invitation of Christ. Truly, live life without regret. And if you have regrets, come see me. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. And brothers and sisters, we do only live once. Let's make it count.